Action. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. We've got an exciting show for you today. Here, We're going to be berthing one of our S18 NST harp guitars, which is the f most famous harp guitar on the internet, it's I believe. Famous harp guitar on the internet. Yeah. 68 million views of the Sound of Silence. So yesterday, we glued the top on. Yeah, yesterday, it was a whole bunch of pieces of wood that were get, getting glued together. Today, it basically looks and feels kind of like a guitar. Maybe later, we'll rim sand the back and get it prepped to get the back glued on. I still have to brace the back, so we'll probably show you a little bit of that footage too. Here we go. Um, sometimes when you glue the top on, a little bit of the glue seeps down and then we'll actually glue the side or the block to the mold. So let's, you'll hear some cracking and stuff happening. Here it comes. Ah, our guitar is born. <laughs> it's very resonant right now. All right, the next thing I like to do is put really accurate measurements all the way around the rim of this instrument so that I know as I'm sanding it, the rim is gonna have the exact profile as the back needs. sides are on this thing. So th this is actually a giant disc sander and it's a little unusual of a, of a method to do this job. Um, a lot of people just do this by hand. I've kind of built this machine and it helps me to get to sand a, a radius into the back. Always wear your dust mask and your ear protection. As I'm looking down the edge of this thing, I can see the rim is completely perfectly aligned from side to side and from, from neck to tail. Time to glue some lining in here. I'm going to go ahead and clamp these on here with these office clips and then I'm going to draw little lines to cut them all off at the right length and then I'm going to ask my brother to give me some help to glue this in. It's nice to have some help. tough on this particular build because the center of the tail block is not centered on the back of the instrument so it's actually kind of hard to find the center of this tail block where we put the hole for the end pin jack. It's very handy to be able to do that right now because yes I have the back off of here I can see right where the middle of that tail block is. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is find that position, measure, like I have my pencil mark there halfway through, and then I'm going to drill myself a pilot hole in the back of this so that later when we drill the half inch hole we'll know exactly where it's at. It'll already be pre-drilled. thing I need to do is glue down a back strip and that's a long grain softwood such as um, Engelman spruce like I have here and I just realized that I'm out of this stuff. This is my last piece and so that normally gets glued down right here to reinforce the book match. There's actually a joint right here where this pencil line is and it goes all the way down here. Two pieces of wood have been have been cut apart and book matched back together. 
So this is a piece of quarter sawn Engelmann spruce. Quarter sawn means that the, uh, the grain is exactly opposing the cut that you make. So I found this piece of spruce that's got a knot in it, so this won't be able to be used for a top of a guitar or a harp guitar. And so it'll make a perfect candidate to um, cut into backstrip material. bunch of these strips made and it takes about two of them and I'm gonna glue them together end to end like this then I'm gonna go see what Dave's doing in the other side of the shop hey we're now in the spray booth here tone up guitars and to finish off the day I'm going to spray the first coat on this harp guitar uh, we're using a water-based polyurethane product it's very fairly thick material it's kind of it right here it's real milky ish white but it's also very thick it's maybe the consistency of like um, heavy whipping cream or half and half, maybe a little thicker. So even with my three millimeter nozzle gun, it still has a hard time atomizing into a nice spray pattern. So a trick you can do with this stuff is you can thin it with denatured alcohol. Um, it is water-based, so you could thin it with water, but denatured alcohol gasses off a lot faster than water. So that's what I have in my gun right now. It's a little bit thinner material. You can kind of see it there. That's about the consistency I want. That'll give us a good even spray on there. One, one other thing, when I'm putting the nozzle on here, I'll be moving the spray pattern when it's like that. The spray comes out like this, horizontal or vertical. When I have this vertical, the spray pattern comes out horizontally. We're at about 40 pounds of pressure on my air. That sounded good. You hear that sound? That's the sound of the material going up through the siphon and coming out the nozzle. Now it's full of material, we're ready to spray. That's a good even spray on there. Um, Givens Legacy Mandolins in Kokolala, Idaho. I've got a couple pieces that I've I've already pre-cut out of some of those billets um, that are perfectly quarter sawn, which means the grain is actually running this direction through this little board. So that this is flat sawn here, where the grain is running this direction. You can see the grains running out on, on the top piece of here, and then you can see long skinny grains on the edge. So the back strip has been drying over the weekend and now it's time for me to finish up the bracing job here. So I'm gonna take my quarter sawn pieces of Engelman spruce 
and I'm going to lay them across here and trace the radius profile into them and then I'm going to sand them on the sander, cut them on the bandsaw, and get them ready to glue in here. I'm also going to have to chisel out little bits of this back strip to get these to fit in there just perfectly. First coat is applied and all dry. Uh, I've got good coverage everywhere. I kind of spray a little bit extra on that first time so that the wood soaks it in and I don't have to do so much on the next couple coats. So it's got a lot of lifted grain right now. Uh, what happens is that first coat goes on, the grain tends to lift a little, so it's really rough uh, to the touch. That happens every time pretty much, so I have to go over it uh, just lightly with uh, usually 400 grit Abronet sandpaper. This stuff's kind of got a transparency to it. It's more like a cloth type of a sandpaper. It lasts a long time. It's good for dust collection. Dust flows through it. It's good for wet sanding. Uh, great stuff. Anyways, that's what we use. So I'll use some 400 grit and I'll probably go over this with the orbital sander and then I'll be ready to spray a second coat on it. This stuff is actually used already. I don't need to have too gritty of paper for this preliminary sand. I'm basically just sanding the dust and smoothing it out so that it can accept the next uh, coat on there. What's cool is that I have a downdraft table here so a lot of the dust is going to get sucked out these fans. I definitely did not want to sand through anywhere. They're trying to build up finish on here, not take it off. Got the rough spots all out of there and it's nice and smooth to the touch. So as the different coats go on there, it gets smoother and smoother as you go, right? Top will do a little bit more leveling on so that that will get smoother and smoother. I'm gonna mix some of this with it, some denatured. I'm gonna eyeball that. I got to uh, wipe her down first. Uh, the finish never lies, it's very true. Uh, when you look at it in the light especially, you can see all those little anomalies. So sometimes you have to go through and fill those little uh, bits with some finish. I can see a little spot of grain right here that's, I can rub my fingernail over it and I can feel a little ridge. And so that will definitely need to get drop filled. Of the polyurethane here, which is nice and thick, I use it unthinned and I just simply drag a little bead of it along that's probably enough there. Pull it back a little bit. Leave a little drop right on that spot, hence the term drop filling. And I only see one right here. So I'm going to drop fill that. And that is it. I will leave this probably overnight. Let those drops completely cure all the way through before I sand them off or Sometimes I razor blade them off first and then scrape them flush with the top of the surface. And then we can sand, put another coat on there, perfectly level. We talked a little bit about the thistle inlay. So 
uh, what I have to do is to double check my design. I have the entire design here separated out into the different parts of the flower. So that's the flower. Here's the bulb I'm calling. I'm calling this the stem and the leaves. So all of them should be the same. Why aren't they working? I don't know. Boy, you really cannot see that on the camera. Let's go with one point. How about that? Can we see one point? Looks like you can. That's kind of what the design's gonna look like. You can see there's some extra lines in the leaves here, so this will actually get laser cut, and that'll be kind of an engraving in the pearl. So there'll be some definition to this leaf. This whole bottom part, I'm not really that worried about. I am a little bit more worried about this flower because there's a lot of tight little spikes up in here, and sometimes it's difficult to get the pearl to, to laser cut that small Pearl tends to curl and burn if it's if it's too small of points like that. So we are going to have to decomplicate this design. And if we do like a bigger stroke to it, you can see how that kind of decomplicates it. Let's see what this looks like. So I got it to look like that now. And that has a lot more connected type petals up here, if you can call them petals. All right, well, thanks for joining us, everybody. We've had a great time in the shop. We're glad that you came with us on the ride. So far today, you've seen back bracing, I think, and I worked on the rim. What did you do today, Dave? Uh, I did some spraying. I got a couple coats sprayed on one of the other builds we're working on, kind of at the same time, and that one had to get some drop fill done, so I showed them a little bit about drop filling. And then lastly, I was able to work on the inlay that's going to go on that NST model, but the design had to get a little bit updated, so I printed out the new and the old one. And next time, hopefully we will be able to start cutting into some of this stuff right here, which is the pearl laminate. I have a couple different flavors of that stuff. So we're so glad that you joined us today. We hope that you uh, hit subscribe on our channel. We're going to just pick a couple tunes now.